Okay, so this NVMe M.2 adapter was sent to me by GeekPi on Amazon. And uh, just to show what it comes with before I plug it in, uh, so it's a USB A to A adapter. Uh, and then we've got some sort of standoff screws and uh, five little screws in there as well. Uh, and this is the adapter. You can see I've got a single screw in here holding it down. If you don't have the screw in, it kind of lifts up. Uh, so you, you slot it in, just like slotting in RAM. Uh, and then that basically keeps it nicely in place so there's no movement there at all. And you can see there is, now I've got no instructions, but this is a little five volt input uh, as well as this. Uh, there's obviously the USB connector to connect it to the Pi. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just gonna plug it in with, I've got an A to A cable, which I got with my uh, USB SATA adapter. So I'm just gonna plug that straight into uh, a working Pi. So this is my cluster case. Uh, as you can see, I've got my 52 Pi uh, heat sink on there and it's being cooled by this nice big fan, but I've got separate videos on this. So I've got, at the moment, an SSD drive with Twister OS on it. Uh, that's just my mouse and keyboard. So I'm just gonna plug this into USB 3 and then also plug it into this SATA adapter. There you go. Uh, and then I can boot it up and I'll show you how it shows up. Okay, so I'm all plugged in. I've downloaded the latest Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit beta uh, from here, which is on my desktop just here. So let's see if Raspberry Pi Imager recognizes it. Choose OS, custom, Pi, desktop, uh, and you can see here, Raspberry Pi OS ARM64, hit open, choose my NVMe drive. Oh, and it recognizes it that NVMe SSD external 256.1 gig. Got my money's worth. So hit write, and let's see how quick this writes. This might be really quick. Oh, I've never seen it move like that before. Crikey. So this is coming from an SSD, a Sunbow SSD, uh, with a CSL USB to SATA adapter. And then I'm just using my USB A to A cable, which I got with, a, uh, with an external hard drive. That is so quick. See if it verifies at the same sort of speed. That is amazing. <laughs> Super quick. Oh, this is good. Look at it, just, just, I don't even need to uh, cut anything out. It's, it's going that fast that it's, uh, it doesn't need me to do anything. Okay, that took no time at all. Right, so now what I need to do is uh, try and boot it up. So let's close that down and shut down. And what I'm gonna do is unplug the SSD. So all I'm gonna have plugged in, uh, still with this USB A to A cable, just in this testing stage before I build it into the system. Uh, so let's shut that down. Okay, so it's booted up, seems nice and quick. Uh, it didn't take very long. It, on the first boot, it usually takes a bit longer anyway. So let's uh, do all the usual bit. Okay, so let's open up a terminal and just show the information on the drive if you're interested in all of that. Uh, and it does support UASP, so it is, it is supporting the faster USB protocol. Okay, so let's go into Raspberry Pi Diagnostics and run a speed test. And it does this super fast. <laughs> there you go, that was it. That was it in real time, I haven't cut anything out. So sequential write speed, 324,435. The target is 10,000. Random write speed, 20,978. The target is 500. And random read speed, 15,588. The target is 1,500. Uh, those, those targets are set for an A1 SD card. Um, so you can see it absolutely obliterates it. I think it's the fastest I've ever seen, uh, which kind of makes sense because uh, I'm guessing not that many people are using uh, an NVMe M.2 drive on their Pi. So, Let's, I need to save that and pop that in a text document. And I'll save that on the desktop. So let's just call it NVMe because it's the only NVMe I've got. There we go. 
And what I need to do now is switch it off and instead of using this, well it's not a long cable but it's about a 40 centimeter USB A to A cable, I'm going to use this little tiny USB adapter to be able to pop it in the Pi, but I'm also going to put it in my cluster case, so let's do that. Okay, so I don't know if I've shown the board that closely, but here it is and how it looks. Uh, I didn't get any instructions, so I don't actually know about the extra power or anything. I've been using it without any extra power and it's been absolutely fine. But uh, that's what it looks like. There's a close-up of that little USB adapter. I got the same sort of thing with the Despi Pro, but it came with like a rubber bit on the back, uh, like a protection bit on the back. This is all uh, exposed, USB 3.1 Gen 1. So. And I love this cluster case. But for me, uh, someone who makes loads of Pi videos and always messing about with stuff, I'm going to probably uh, unplug the, the fan and the LEDs because, or at least the fan, uh, basically uh, it's getting colder here now and uh, the fan blows so much cool air across it and it doesn't really need it for most things that I'm doing. So I'm going to leave that loose. Uh, it's probably, probably pays to take it out anyway because I'm going to have to take out this shelf. Okay, so let's take all these off, and that gives me access to these shelves. So I just need to be able to tease it out. There we go. So here is my current setup. I like this way that this is a spring-loaded SD card adapter because it means you can leave an SD card in there, boot from the USB drive, uh, and then when you want to switch back, you can boot from SD. So that's really quite handy. So what I need to do is take off this bottom layer and mount this board underneath. So I need to pull off these five screws. So that's the plate. So now I need to make sure that this goes together. There you go, so it's gonna mount like that. And this bit in here. So I need those standoffs to be in the way. Look, yeah, I've got some big, biggish standoffs in here. I'm guessing it's those, are they gonna be long enough? Yeah, it looks like they're gonna be. So I need to pull off these and pop these longer standoffs in. So I'm gonna put four of those in. Okay, so there's the long standoffs in, uh, but I also need one for the uh, SD card adapter uh, bit here. Uh, and that needs, uh, well, I haven't got another one of these long ones, but I have got uh, another one of the short ones and the short ones, two of those are the same length as the long one. Yeah, so that's actually slightly too long because the pin is too long. I wonder if I've got one in my collection. Well, it's gone most of the way in. Um, I would say it's pretty much, it's only a little bit longer and there's a bit of give in this, I would think. So I'm just not gonna do it too tight on that bit um, and see how it goes. So now I've got all the standoffs in, so I need to attach this to it. So let's pop that USB into that bottom one and all of this should line up which it does, but now I need more standoffs. Actually, I didn't need that one because this is gonna to have to be longer and longer again because it's not gonna have that bit in. So I need more standoffs in here. I guess they just need to be fairly short. No, actually, they're not gonna be long enough. The drive will be touching, so I need some longer ones. Luckily, I have this kit, and I'll put a link in the description to that, uh, which Everything Computers did a video on. So, Let's pop these reasonably long ones in. I could even uh, go down a bit lower on the shelves, but I like the way it looks and I like having a spare shelf. Now there we go. So basically I've got this long one for the SD card to keep this stable uh, and they look about, about the right height. I'm happy with that. That'll do. Right, so let's get it onto the Perspex board and you can see all of this lines up. So I just need to get the little tiny screws into there. Okay, so this is how it looks now. So we've got the NVMe M.2 board on the bottom here. We've got the USB adapter plugged in. This is my mouse keyboard, that one there. And then I've got my Ice Tower cooler on the top. And this works incredibly well passively, but obviously I can use the fan as well. So let's get that back in the cluster case. And these bits are always harder to, to line up when you do it this way. Oh, and we're on. Just need to screw it all back together again now. Okay, so I had to take it apart once more uh, because the cables wouldn't plug in. 
So what I've done now is I've dremeled out, there was a line across here and I've dremeled that out. So if I show you closely, you can see that all the connections are nice and accessible now. So the, uh, the USB-C and the HDMI and the audio jack were in line with a bit of perspex, so you actually couldn't get the cables in. But it's still nice and structurally sound. I've still got the handle to be able to carry it around. So let's plug it in and start it up. Okay, so starts up nice and quick. So it's completely silent now. I haven't got the LEDs on, I haven't got the fan on, uh, I haven't got any cables coming out of it apart from the HDMI and the USB-C. So it's super neat uh, and everything is all very accessible. So let's do another diagnostics test. So run test. And this is with this little short USB adapter. So I can't believe how quick it is. So let's copy just the last little bit and have a look at that document that we did before. So funny enough, it's actually slightly slower on the sequential write speed. These, these results vary obviously. Uh, but the random write speed and the random read speed is faster on both. So what we've got 324,435 uh, with the target of 10,000 and now we've got 303,407 uh, but the random write speed, this is so, so fast. I don't know if anybody has had a faster result than this. I'd be interested to see if you have uh, but uh, I may have the fastest Pi 4 around. Okay, and this isn't overclocked yet, so I haven't done anything with that either. I'll do more tests in the future, but this is going to be my main system for now, uh, because certainly for testing, uh, it is super convenient for me. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.